Here's a quick look inside the chassis after I've replaced all the caps and uh, most of the resistors. Now, I'm, I don't go much uh, for uh, restuffing. Personally, I think restuffing is uh, a very expensive use of time. Very few people care enough about it in a radio like this to worry about restuffing. Now, in a 1920s radio, perhaps I can understand. But even then, as I've mentioned before, I really don't like to restuff. Um, I just think that what you're actually doing is removing a bit of history because you're eliminating uh, an example of how things were actually done. So if I'm going to do that, I might as well just replace the cap. But that's just my opinion. You may have your own. Everyone has their own. Uh, I Let's see here. I, I always, however, like to install... Let's see if we can see it here. It's a little tough to find with the camera. If you look right down here, you'll see that little black thing looks like a uh, black ceramic disc capacitor. What it actually is, is a, a current limiting resistor, a negative temperature coefficient, not resistor, a thermistor, a negative temperature coefficient uh, current limiting thermistor, a CL90. That's the series, CL series 90. And also, I like to install a fuse holder in the chassis. Um, yeah, most of the time I have to drill a hole, but I find that um, the safety of both myself and the folks who, who I'm working for um, is worth drilling that one hole. I do a nice, neat job. I use a nice um, vintage type fuse holder. And uh, it's really a good thing to have. And I think that anybody that doesn't put a fuse holder in, or a fuse in their radio is making a mistake. Now, as you see, I, I make all sorts of notes inside the chassis. It helps me find things when I'm underneath there. You see, I left a, a dog bone or two in there, mostly because they were perfectly in spec. And there's no point in throwing it away if it's perfectly in spec. Now, if it had drifted even 10% high, I would get rid of it. But there's a couple in there, uh, the high wattage ones, that were just dead on. So I left them alone. But anyway, I make notes all through the radio. It helps me find things. I like to use the uh, Panasonic um, 630 volt uh, film capacitors for the small capacitors. They work out real well and they're they're pretty cost effective for me. I buy lots of capacitors, so I usually buy them in bulk and I buy them at a pretty good discount because I buy them in bulk. There's a little wire round that looks like a uh, you know a mica mold capacitor that that was perfectly within spec and that big three watt resistor was within spec. But other than that, all the other resistors are new. I personally like to use shrink tubing on just about every lead that I put in the radio. It does a couple things for me. They're a lot easier to see than bare wire. So when I'm troubleshooting, I can find them easier and I can I can trace down wires faster. And also, I can do stages of a radio in color as well, or color code the B plus, or whatever, you know, there's all kinds of things I can do with the colors. We have an excellent surplus electronics store here in town, and I buy all of my stuff at that store, a little place called Ray Elko in Salt Lake City. Pretty neat store. But anyway, this is your standard uh, Zenith radio. Um, there are the electrolytics. Zenith didn't use a can on this radio, so I just used a, a terminal strip. I don't restuff those anyway. Use a terminal strip and a couple of uh, electrolytic capacitors. Piece of cake, easy to see, easy to maintain if I ever need to change them. And uh, also there, I, you know, Zenith used a, a sort of a leather belt for this um, main drive belt for the, the tuning. And I buy my belts at a place called Adams Manufacturing. And they sell radio dial belts. And boy, they are nice belts. I've never had one break. I've been doing this for a few years now. They're high quality. I can make my own belts. And there are kits to do that. And I do that in some cases. But I'll tell you something. On this particular radio, I have to take a lot of things out to replace that belt. You can see this... this uh, Big uh, weighted wheel has to come out. All of these pieces in here have to come out before I can replace that belt. That's a real pain in the butt. 
And so I like a belt that I know is not going to break. And I have not been totally confident with my glued belts. I have had one or two of those break. So I'll use them when they're easy, in locations that are easy to replace. But in this particular one and a lot of other places like it, Adams has a full selection of all the sizes for specific radios that I buy. And Zenith was really smart about it in that they had a few common sizes that were pretty much throughout their line. And so I buy these, you know, three or four or five at a time. And uh, they work out real nice. So there's a quick look. There's your Y2 safety capacitor. I wouldn't mess with a radio, even a transformer radio, without a safety capacitor. Um, let's see, there's, uh, I don't know, pretty much just standard stuff. So that's a quick look under the chassis. That's all for now.